We're going to look at a credit card example here in Excel where we have a starting balance of zero. Um, our APR is 22.99%. We're going to make a minimum payment of 7%. And we're going to make a $20 purchase every month. And that's it. Okay, so that's kind of, we're going to make the minimum payment. That's all we're going to do. We're going to look at how this works in Excel. So if you think about, um, if you start with zero, you don't pay a finance charge, but we do have a new purchase. So if we're trying to find a new balance in Excel, the new balance is going to be our starting balance plus our finance charge plus any new purchases. And so I'm using cell references so that I can autofill later. Right? We knew that was 20, but just bear with me. Now, my minimum payment, as we know, is 7% of the new balance. So 7% of, of means to multiply. So if I take 20, I'm going to multiply by 7% as a decimal. And that tells me that my minimum payment is $1.40. All right, so my starting balance. Well, if I had a balance of $20 and I paid $140, you can see that I subtracted my new balance minus my minimum payment, and that gives me my carryover balance for the next month. All right, well, how do I find a finance charge? Well, my finance charge is my starting balance multiplied by my APR. Oop, I don't want to do that. Let me go ahead and just type that in. My AP. APR divided by 12, because remember, we need our annual percentage rate to become a monthly percentage rate. So my begin beginning balance multiplied by my monthly percentage rate gives me my finance charge. And I'm going to go ahead and shrink that to just two decimal places because we are talking about money. Now, I've already put a new balance formula in. So watch how this works. I can go ahead and autofill. And notice I have nothing. There's nothing here because that this number is found by subtracting and there's nothing in those pieces. So I'm just going to autofill. Oh, I don't want anything there. Okay. Um, I'm going to autofill this down to my black spots. I'm going to autofill this down to my black spots. Now I want this to be two decimal places because again, we're talking about money. So I'm just going to shrink it down, uh, make that black again. And look what we have. So the nice thing, and you can click on any one of these boxes and the formula will show up in the bar and it'll show you what it added together to get there. Just hit enter and it will go back to where it was. So you can see pretty quickly that with a new purchase of $20 and only making the minimum payment, you can see how your finance charges increase each month. You can see how your minimum payments also increase. And while the minimum payment covers your finance charge every month, because you're uh, putting a $20 purchase on every month, that doesn't work, right? All of a sudden, you're, you're in the hole. So, you know, you can use formulas in Excel, more function statistical, um, we can find the sum, or we could use the auto sum function up there. Where's sum? Oh, I just got to use this one. If I want to sum these up, boom. You paid $19.87 in finance charges. Well, what did you pay in minimum payment? Well, let's sum these. You paid $90.79, um, but your balance is still $169. So even though you've paid almost $91, you're not getting anywhere. So, you know, and the nice thing with Excel is that you can then say, well, let's pretend instead of 7%, I want to pay 10%. All you got to do is refill and it'll fix all of them. And notice how my finance charge went down and my minimum payment went up. I owe less money, right? You could do, you could keep doing that. Okay, what if I wanted to pay 15%? Change the first one and then click and drag autofill. Again, everything changes. My balance is going down even more. I'm paying more, but I'm paying less interest. So you can play with that in Excel as much as you want to really see how it can affect your overall uh, piece to this puzzle here in credit cards.